Nehemiah chapter 6, we'll begin reading verse number 1, that's better. The Bible says, And it came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem the Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had builded the wall and that there was no breach left therein, though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates, that Samballot and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good singing. Thank you, Lord, for the good testimonies. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing for your people. Lord, thank you for the lessons of life you teach us. Thank you for the blessings of life you bestow upon us. And thank you, Lord, for being a God who's trustworthy one that we can depend upon, one that we can look to, and Lord, one that we can certainly uh, put all of our faith in. Now, Father, as we come to you in prayer, we do pray for those that are sick. I pray for Miss Veronica. You touch her and, Lord, the rest of the family. I do pray, Lord, that you would be with Brother Bobby and his uh, procedure tomorrow, Lord. It's going to affect him for the next month. I pray that, Lord, you would give him grace and that, Lord, uh, uh, you would heal him and, God, you would do great things uh, in his life. Father, I pray for Brother Bob. You'd help him as he's recovering from the tooth extraction. And, Father, I pray for Brother Clint and Brother uh, Tommy and Brother Seth who are all sick. And, Lord, I pray for Miss Caitlin who's sick. And, God, others that may be a little under the weather, I pray you'd touch them and, then, God, I pray for these that have come out tonight on this cold night that, Lord, you'd bless them abundantly from the Word of God. And, God, I pray you'd insulate their lives and put a hedge about them, even though uh, it seems like there are cases of this COVID picking up. I pray you'd protect your people. And, God, you would certainly use them as lights to a dark and uh, depressed and dispersed world. And Father, we certainly do pray that, Lord, you'd help us all to be revived and ever grow closer to Christ. Uh, God, I pray you would increase our desire for heavenly things. And God, help us, Lord, to see things in truth and in light. And God, help us to be vessels of honor, vessels meet for the Master's use. Uh, now, Father, bless the reading of the Word of God tonight. Lord, help us, Lord, to ever set in heavenly places. Uh, and Father, help us to ever draw nigh to Christ. Uh, Father, have your will and way now. God, meet every need of every heart in attendance tonight. Uh, and God, uh, we'll thank you and praise you for what you do. Uh, for it's in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Uh, amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple things from these verses. Uh, the first thing that I'm interested in is I want you to notice the protractors uh, in verse number 1. The Bible says, And it came to pass when Samballot and Tobiah and Geshem the Arabian uh, and uh, the rest of our enemies heard that I had builded the wall uh, that there was no breach left therein uh, can I say friends uh, there are always enemies to the work of God there are always some that want to see the things of God halted uh, or hindered uh, can I say this community does not want to see uh, God do a great work uh, because it will cause them to have to change their lifestyles. Uh, can I say uh, uh, the sorry devil himself uh, does not want to see the work of God progress uh, because people that he has in his clutches, uh, people that he has bound by chains of sin, uh, those things will be broken. Uh, and those that now defy God uh, and cuss God uh, will worship God uh, and praise God uh, and others too will come to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, here we find three of the enemies of Israel mentioned. The first one mentioned is Sanballat. The second one is Tobiah. And the third one is Geshem. 
And I, you know me, if you've been around me very long, I'm always interested in what these fellows' names mean. Uh, when you find a biblical person, uh, if you can find what their name means, it'll give you some insight to their character. Uh, can I say the first fellow, Sam Ballot, uh, his name has a couple meanings. Uh, the first meaning is uh, enemy in secret. Uh, uh, we find in this text that they want uh, 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 Nehemiah to come down from the wall and to meet them in a village. Uh, and he says, even though they thought to do mischief unto me, uh, he's an enemy in secret. Uh, can I say the sorry devil never shows up in a red suit with horns and a pitchfork? Uh, he wants to come in subtly. Uh, he wants to come in as a snake in the grass. Uh, he wants to come in as a sly fox. Uh, he comes in as a wolf in sheep's clothing. Uh, he does not want to reveal who he, wa who he really is. Uh, uh, therefore, you'd run from him. Uh, can I say he's an enemy in secret? But also, can I say this? Uh, his name means sin gives life. You see, his name is derived from one of the gods that uh, 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 the wicked Balaam crowd was worshiping. The moon god was named Sanballat. And they believed that the moon was, re was responsible for giving life. Sin gives life. And can I say the Bible says for the wages of sin is death, not life. Uh, so we see one of the protractors, one of the enemies of Israel, Sam Ballot. The other one is Tobiah. Tobiah's name means Jehovah is good. Can I say there are a lot of people that praise the Lord but don't know the Lord. There's a lot of people that will come around and give the impression they're for God, but they're really not. You ever hear of a fellow by the name of Judas Iscariot? Hmm? He hung out with Jesus for three and a half years, but he was quick to stab him in the back at the first time he was offered money. Hmm? Can I say, not everybody that comes to the house of God, not everybody you come in contact with that tells you they're a Christian, not everybody that carries a Bible is for the Lord Jesus Christ. We see Tobiah, we see Sam Ballot, and then there's Geshem. Geshem's name really means rain. There are some people who are always wanting to put a wet blanket on it. They want to drown out what God's are doing. They want to put out the fire of God. All Israel did, uh, if you've never studied the book of Nehemiah and studied the book of Ezra, can I say that Israel had been left in ruins. Uh, Israel's been in captivity in Babylon for 70 years. Uh, and through the providence of God, uh, uh, God has allowed Ezra and Nehemiah to come and rebuild Jerusalem uh, and start the process uh, of the gathering of the Jews back to their homeland. Uh, 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 the city's walls had been destroyed, but here uh, Nehemiah's got the wall built. Uh, and hey, things are looking up. Things are moving in the right direction but all of a sudden this crowd's wanting to put a wet blanket on it all. We see the protractors. Now notice the place where they want to meet. Look again in verse number 2. It says, At Samballot, Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono. You know what Ono means? Oh no. You don't need to go there. Uh, actually, Ono is a place of grief. And if you ever meet the devil on the devil's terms, you're going to be left grieving. He'll take more from you than you ever wanted to give him. Hmm. It's always best to just stay with the Lord. Stay busy in the wor Lord's work and let the devil's crowd uh, pout and suck their thumb and go on down the road. We see the place. It's oh no, it's a place of grief. Notice the purpose that they wanted to meet with them. In verse number 2, we mentioned it a second ago, but they thought to do me mischief. The devil never has your best interests at heart. Those that are enemies of the church never have the church best interests at heart. Do you really think that our governor last year really had the church at heart when he wanted to close us down? Some churches have never recovered. Their doors may be open tonight, but there's a big echo in their sanctuaries. Mm -hmm. Did I say? Mm -hmm. The purpose is always to do mischief against the church. 
You know why there's such an attack upon the church? Because the Bible says Jesus loved the church and gave himself for it. Hmm? If God's for it, they're against it. Because the church is a testimony against them. Hmm? The truth of the living God trumps everything they stand for. Hmm? A lot of wicked politicians out there greasing their palms on taxpayers' dollars, and then they want to tell us what we can and cannot do. Well, we have a document that tells what we can and cannot do. It's called the U.S. Constitution. Hmm? But they don't like that. They think they know better than us. Hmm? I was going to save this for a later date. I'll just throw this in right now. Um, a fellow stopped by on Monday that I really, I, I hadn't seen him in a long time. We used to be acquainted together. I'll give you more details at a later date. He's running for office in our district. He's a Baptist fellow, and he is going to give us some of the insight of what is really going on in Washington, or in Frankfurt. Can I help you with something? Our Republican representative in this district gave money to Hillary Clinton when she ran for president. Has fundraisers for abortion clinics, even though he'll come up here and tell us he's against abortion. Huh? Can I say this fellow's running? He's really not a politician, but he's just tired of seeing everything go on that's going on. Huh? So uh, I told him, I said, we get a little closer to primary, I'll let you come on a Sunday night and stand up and tell what you're for. He said, you do that? I said, I sure will. You know, they get tired of me preaching politics, I'll let you do it, huh? Oh, isn't that a blessing? By the way, our missionary Lee Watts to, to the Kentucky government, he's running for office because there's a guy in his district that's the same way. It's about time we get rid of these rhinos. Uh, put people in there that are for the people. Because we are paying their salary. Hmm? They work for us. They don't want you to know that. And can I say, the First Amendment gives the church the right to do what the church is doing tonight, and they don't like it. Mm -mm. The purpose is to do mischief unto us. I want you to notice the persistence of the enemy. Look at verse 4. Yet they sent unto me four times after this sort, and I answer them after the same manner. Can I say, the devil's long-suffering too. He just keeps coming, keeps coming, keeps coming, keeps coming, keeps coming, keeps coming. Five times total, they came at Nehemiah to try and get him off the wall. Now, the devil's slick. He don't always come the same way. He don't care if he catches you today or tomorrow. He's just out to catch you. That's why you always have to be on guard. But then I want you to notice the posse that Nehemiah puts together. Look at verse number 3. He said, And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I'm doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? Notice Nehemiah kept working, but he sent some messengers to go and tell them, hey, boys, you're wasting your time. I got to think about these messengers. First of all, these messengers were accountable. He just didn't send anybody. He didn't look around and say, well, you know what? That guy right there is lazy. I'll send him. No. Because do you remember I just told you Five times they had to deal with these jokers? So it's five times he had to send messengers to go give them the answer. By the way, Sam Ballot, Tobiah, and Geshem was 25 miles away. 25 miles each way. They were accountable. Thank God for those that will do the hard work while others are building a wall. Hmm? Not only were they accountable, they were available. You know why some of you don't do anything for God? You don't make yourself available. God may not put you on the wall to build a wall. God may just send you across the street to give a message to somebody. See, these men were available. They made themselves available to do whatever Nehemiah wanted done. 
be a good day in your life when you say, Lord, if you can find any way to use me, here I am. Huh? Isn't that what Isaiah said? Lord, here am I. Send me. Hmm? Just make yourself available. He may not send you to Africa. He just may have you do something around the church. You don't know. Uh, but if you make yourself available, he'll use whatever talent you have for his glory. They were accountable. They were available. And they were agreeable. Now, we don't know how many messengers they sent, but they had to get along. Hmm? If you have no unity, you have no unction. That's why a lot of churches have problems. Too many people in the church want the glory. God gets the glory. It's all about Him, not about us. You've got to be agreeable. You've got to be on the same page. And these fellows were on the same page. Uh, this is what Nehemiah is requesting. Uh, this is what we're going. They didn't change the message. Uh, they didn't soften the message. Uh, 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 they didn't make up their version of the message. Uh, 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 they just went and said, this is what Nehemiah said, and they did it. Uh, and they did it knowing maybe their own life would be in jeopardy. Hmm? Thank God for messing. This is what I want to preach. I'm, I'm interested in verse 3 again. He said, And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I'm doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Here's what I'm interested in. Why should the work cease? I want to preach on, with God's help tonight on this thought, the work must go on. I, I, I'm overwhelmed unnerved a little disappointed and half angry at all the churches that have shut down quit or aren't concerned about what we're supposed to be doing can I say the work must go on does anybody in here really think that COVID caught God by surprise? Anybody like that? Mm -mm. Did anybody think that the big wind that picked up today caught God by surprise? Mm -mm. Does anything ever catch God by surprise? It would be a great day in your life when you realize nothing occurs to God. He is all-knowing. Mm -mm. So if it didn't catch God by surprise, should that diminish our faith in God? No, he's in control. And if it didn't catch him by surprise, uh, he's promised not to put more on us than we're able to bear. Uh, he knows our weaknesses. He knows our strength. He knows our frame. Uh, he knows we are nothing but dust. Uh, he knows all about us. Uh, and if he allows it to come our way, he knows he's equipped us. Uh, and he knows we can handle it. Uh, and sometimes, uh, in putting on the whole arm of God, uh, he says, having done all to stand, stand therefore. The work must go on. Can I say, first of all, the work must go on despite the foes. Hmm? Now, I was an only child had a very vivid imagination. Uh, read a lot of books because I didn't have anybody to play with. I was really good at playing army. I never lost. I'd set up one outfit on one side and one on the other side, and whichever one I was in the mood to win, they always won. Huh? Never lost a race. Uh, my hot wheel always won. But I always uh, like to read. I don't know why, but I did. Y'all remember the story of the, uh, the big bad wolf and the three little pigs? Uh, big bad wolf, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. Well, when they got that house of brick, that wolf blew his brains out. That house didn't come down. Can I say, our house, the church house, the church of the living God is built upon the solid rock. And let the enemy huff and let him puff and let him blow. Uh, hey, uh, we're not built on sinking sand. Uh, uh, this thing that Jesus Christ uh, founded upon himself 2,000 years ago, uh, 
She's not going down. She's a going up, friend. Uh, and hey, uh, it can make the devil matter. Then, uh, 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 oh, get out. It's not going to change the fact. God's still in control. Uh, he still loves the church. Uh, and the church must go on uh, despite our foes. Uh, let them line up. Uh, let them take their best shot. Uh, they may take a few of us out. Uh, hey, but mark her down. Hey, God's still for the church. Uh, Despite our foes, the work must go on. I'm going to tell you something may be disheartening. Said it before, you didn't believe me, maybe you believe me tonight. Things are not going to get any better. There's always going to be something. If it's not a virus, uh, it's going to be something in the economy, uh, 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 it's going to be something with your fuel. Uh, it's going to be something else. Uh, uh, there's always going to be a narrative. Uh, and it's not going to be for the betterment. Sin is going to increase. Wickedness is going to abound. Uh, they're going to constantly try to attack the very uh, fundamentals of, uh, of humanity and the very fundamentals of the Scriptures. Uh, they're going to constantly come at us. Uh, but friends, the work must go on. It's not going to get any better. Not till Jesus comes. Then it's going to get glorious, and who cares? Uh, work must go on, despite the foe. Can I say this? The work must go on, despite the fears. Now, I know if you've got your TV on 24-7 or you got your Facebook on, or you got your Twitter on, or you got whatever else out there on, you're bombarded with information that is devised to scare you to death. Monday morning at 6.30, they started talking about white death. And then the very newscaster said this, even though it hasn't formed yet, they had no idea if it was coming, where it was coming from, how much it was coming. But the four-letter word snow caused everybody to run out by all the bread and toilet paper they could buy. People scared to death. I, don't, I didn't do the math. How long ago was uh, 1977? 44 years ago? Gosh, Clint, we're getting old. 40, 45 years ago this year yeah we're 2022 that stinks uh, I remember 11 feet snow drifts hmm. uh, and can I help you something I didn't have a four wheel drive I had a 1974 Nova with GT qualifiers on it, and it went everywhere I needed to go. It was just a big sled in the snow is all it was. Weighed 65,000 pounds. It'd go through anything. Uh, throw a couple concrete blocks in the trunk. You was ready to go. Uh, what can I say? Every time they say snow, people whose hair is gray like mine remembers 1977. And everything goes into chaos. People are afraid. By the way, all the narrative that we need to do away with coal and do away with gasoline and fuel and oil and have electric cars, by the way, that crowd's ignorant because you need coal plants in order to produce the electricity. All right? How about all them people where the highway shut down in Virginia because of ice? People have been sitting out there for 20 hours. You got an electric car. You ran out of energy hours ago. How's that little electric scooter help, helping you now, huh? No heat, no water, no nothing. Uh, but they want to scare you to death. Brother Randy's telling me they're already coming up with a new variant. Brother Ray said they got now something called Flurona. You made that up, didn't you? Now, you're not smart enough to make that up. I mean, they want you to absolutely be scared to death. They want you to put more faith in Fauci than the Bible. 
You're not allowed to have common sense anymore. By the way, some of you aren't using it. I quit preaching, wash your hands. I quit preaching, take your vitamin C, take your vitamin D, take your zinc. And some of you have been getting sick. I watch you leave church house. You don't watch your, wash your hands. You don't hit the, uh, uh, the sanitizer, hand sanitizer stuff. You go out there and get you a hamburger and you just shook hands with somebody has got the gank and then you're sick. As Gomer Powell would say, shame, shame, shame. Y'all Google it, Gomer Powell. Don't Google Jim Neighbors. That might get you in trouble. Just Google Gomer Powell. Uh, but they want to put you in fear. Uh, you know why I don't wa watch any of Biden's press conferences if he has one? Because watching that old man try to fumble through words scares me to death. Because he has the button to send nukes all over the world. Hopefully you put some measures on them subs against mashed potato brains. Don't worry about it. He couldn't remember the code to punch in anyway. Huh? He said last week we're in the year 2020. Uh, hello. The sad thing is he thinks he is still in 2020. You know why they parade him out there? To scare you to death. Anybody with any common sense knows that man. He, he really doesn't have all his faculties. And we can laugh at him, but it's sad. And I don't know if you know this, when they do show him, he's not really at the White House. They have a stage. Where is he? Is he at a nursing home? And who's sitting in the Oval Office? That's what I want to know. It's scary. But despite whatever they come up with to scare us next, the work must go on. Despite all the fear. Huh? Listen, I heard today, if you buy a new car, heaven help you if you buy a new one, because, I mean, they, they priced them so far out. I mean, you might as well buy a car. I mean, I mean, buy a home before you buy a car. But they said because of the chip problem. I don't know if you knew that. You couldn't get chips for them, and that's why nobody could get a new. Poor to I'd hate to be a Toyota salesman. Have you been by their lot for, for a solid year? They've had six cars on the lots. I mean, how are them people making any money? But they said, even if you get a new one now, the chips aren't going to run everything that the car runs. So make sure the car works before you buy it. That's probably a good thing to know, that you hit the brakes and the brakes actually work before you drive them. Uh, hey, make fun of my 74 Nova. I did have a computer brain in it. Uh, hey, radiators start leaking, put some black pepper in it. Man, it'd go for a month. Hey, start to go out. All you needed was a screwdriver put between the solenoids there. Boom, it'd start right up. Good old days. You could work on them. Huh? I'm just trying to tell you, all this modern technology and all that. Do you know what chaos would strike in America if they'd shut the Internet off? You do know in China, they control the Internet. They only let people see what they want them to see. I don't know if you heard, but Facebook and Twitter took Trump off during the election. They didn't want you to see him. Hmm? Can I help you with something? What happens if they shut the whole thing down in America? People would lose their minds. Hmm? They'd have to find a real babysitter. You know, now by the time they're three, they're giving them a the phone. Here, take this. Go out and get out of my hair. Huh? Huh? I'm just trying to help you. Despite any fear, the work must go on. Can I say this? Despite any falsehoods, the work must go on. Most of the narratives being sent across the waves of America are not truths. At best, they're partial truths. 
they don't give you the truth. They don't give you the facts. They don't want you to make clear-cut decisions based on reality. Hmm? Matter of fact, they even make reality shows not based on reality. Hmm? Despite the falsehoods. Despite the false preachers. Hmm? Despite uh, the reformed fundamentalists. And despite uh, uh, the charismatics. And despite anything else that comes out telling us what we should believe. The work must go on. Despite any falsehoods. Can I say this? Despite the faltered, the work must go on. Now, our church has been blessed. Uh, most folks that come stick. You know, I'm looking around here, and, and how many, I mean, the vast majority in here tonight has been here more than 10 years. Mm, even more than that, 15 years, 20 years. I mean, folks just come, they stick. But you know what? We could fill up a gymnasium with some that came and they're no longer here. Hmm. Just because some falter and lose the faith, the work must go on. Hmm. You say, well, I sure miss so-and-so. I do too, but the work must go on. Hmm. There's still sinners out there. There's still folks to reach. There's still light to shine. There's still salt to throw out there. The work must go on, despite the faithless. That's another blessing that we have. Those of you that have come in the last five years or so, you ought to be so thankful. We can stand up now and say, okay, I think it's time to build. And it, it don't matter what the price of lumber is. Don't matter. Folks would say, okay, let's build, because i got faith. They've seen God do so many things around here, they just believe God's going to do it. It's not always been that way. I remember when we moved into this building, there was people ringing my phone off the hook. Preacher, how are we going to pay for the electric bill? There were people that really believed that the electric bill wouldn't change from the 2,000 square foot building to now having over 9,000 square feet. They thought the electric bill would be the same. How are we going to heat it? We're not. God will. And folks say, how are you going to pay for it? We're not. God will. Because God's one told us to build it. Despite the faithless, despite churches down the street closing, the work must go on. Despite what's popular, the work must go on. Despite the narrative, in order to build a church, you've got to do away with all the fundamental things. Uh, no longer have preaching, no longer have godly singing, and get you a rock band, uh, get you a barroom lights, uh, and, and just uh, have little study groups, uh, and hey, that'll build the church. You know, except the Lord build it, they that labor, labor in vain. You can get a crowd, that don't mean it's a church. Mm. Despite the faithless, the work must go on. And I say this, despite any failures, the work must go on. I hope we never see anybody fall to sin. But if somebody does fall to sin, the work must go on. If somebody does break your heart, the work must go on. And I thought about this. Despite the flesh, the work must go on. If you're not careful, you let the flesh get involved, it'll be a mess. The work must go on. Why, preacher? Why must the work go on? Well because we're still to rescue the perishing. The work must go on because how can they hear except there be a preacher? How can they preach except they be sent? The work must go on because even within a stone's throw of our church tonight, there are people who have never heard a clear-cut presentation of the gospel. The work must go on to rescue the perishing. The work must go on because we're to remain for the prodigals. There are people in here tonight that at one time wasn't in church. They were saved, but not in church. But they found their way home because the doors were open. The lights were on. Uh, folks were still having their arms wide open saying, Welcome home, welcome home. Where to remain for the prodigals. Hmm? Can I say this? Work must go on because there's rewards to be presented. 
Can I say there's rewards in this life and eternity? God rewards the faithful in this life too. God does put His hand on those that make a stand in this life too. God does confound the enemies of the church because of the faithful in this life too. There are rewards. There's rewards seeing people walking out and trust Christ. There's rewards seeing folks get victory. There's rewards in seeing revival break out. There's rewards in this life and then in the life to come. Nehemiah faced opposition, great opposition. Insomuch at one point he told the men to have a tool in one hand and a weapon in the other. It may come down to that. But the work must go on. Because in the end, God got glory. His people got blessed. And the enemy got rebuked and sent on down the road. Hmm. Even a non-Israeli king smote the enemy. He said, what are you trying to say? I said, listen, we don't have to fight the battle. The battles are the Lord's. And the Lord can use ungodly people to whip up on other ungodly people. Read the Bible about how many times... Uh, 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 two different uh, kingdoms would come against Israel and start fighting amongst themselves and Israel was set free. They just took each other out. Huh? You say, what are you trying to say? God's in control. And the work must go on. So tonight, I just want to encourage you. Quit paying attention to everything going on in this world and pay attention to the Lord. Just hang out with Him. He'll help you. Oh, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. You do got to eat, you do got to work, you do got to put up with this world, but this world shouldn't consume you. Christ should. And when you look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, nothing of this world will really detract you. Never lose sight that the work must go on. If you hear of me saying, you know what, let's just shut down for two months, see what happens, shoot me. I've already lost my mind. You know, put me in the same nursing home as Joe Biden or something. The work must go on because there's too much at stake. Too much at stake. All right, well, I'm done. Let's, let's all stand. Maybe you want to come and thank the Lord. You've got a work to come to. Maybe you want to come and thank the Lord that he's been good to you. Maybe you want to come tell the Lord you love him. Maybe... The Lord spoke to your heart, and maybe somebody's down in tonight, and the Lord just told you to go and tell them their blessing. I don't know, just mind the Lord. He's here. And uh, when you're obedient, the work is going on. Because that's what it's all about. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation as they're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, burn it in the gable end of our soul and in our hearts that the work of God must go on. Help us not to detract to us. Help us not to look to the left or the right, but help us, the Lord, stay the course. And Lord, those things that are out of our control, we just relinquish them to you because they're not out of your control. God, we just pray your will would be done. God, save sinners, send revival, reclaim prodigals. God, do a great work. Lord, use all the fear of this day to bring folks unto God. God, help us, Lord, point them in the right direction. Lord, we love you. Thank you for first loving us. Bless these in the altar. God, speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.